Welcome to Malcolm V8. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your Fox body alternator to Ford's newer 6G alternator. Not the 3G, I'm going to show you why the 6G is better, how to get high current outputs of 200 plus amps, and how to make it a bolt-in deal with no custom welding, grinding, or any of that stuff. So let's get to it. Alright, so you probably have a stock Fox alternator, if you've got an 87 through 93, you're looking at a 2G 75 amp unit. Hardly any current there, and it worked back in the day because they didn't have much on those cars. But nowadays with modern electronics, we're putting in bigger fuel pumps because we're making a lot of horsepower, uh, converting to electric fans, that's a big one that draws a lot of power. All kinds of stuff happening, and now you need more power. So back in the day, it was kind of common to throw in a 3G alternator. And you know, that had some downsides. The casing was physically larger, it's a bigger unit. So you had to grind out and custom modify your bracket to get it to fit in there, or you bought an aftermarket bracket that was molded for it. Yeah, you know, it kind of works. And then you only like up, stepped up to about 130 amps was the most common, I believe. Nowadays, you can get a 6G casing like these over here. See, this is the stock casing right here. This is a 6G casing. It looks almost identical. And the nice thing about this 6G casing is it's readily available in a configuration that works and bolts right into the Fox body. And for that, you need to find one for a 2001 through 2004 base model V6 3.8 liter Mustang. That's what works. Now, the nice thing with these V6 alternators is they share the exact same casing, design, shape, and size as the 0304 Mustang Cobra Terminators. And that's a big deal because there's a huge following for those Mustangs, so there's a lot of aftermarket support. You can get them in you know, 150, 200, 300 amp alternators. And since that's available for the Cobras, it's essentially available for the V6 Mustangs, which makes it available for the Fox. So what's the huge difference between the Cobra one and the V6 one? Well, a couple things. One is super simple. It is the electrical outlets on the back are just clocked around at a different angle. Not a huge deal. You can flip open flip over your um, alternator, whichever style you have, you know, some have three bolts, some have four bolts, undo the bolts and just literally spin the back around, clock it in the direction you want, put the bolts back in, easy enough. The other difference is the Cobras have an eight rib pulley on them. V6s have a six rib pulley, just like the, uh, the Fox. So because of the, the high current options out there, you know, kind of sky's the limit, which is really nice. Now to take it a step further, I went ahead and picked up a Denso hairpin unit. Those are, in my opinion, so much more desirable than your more traditional alternator. Uh, they produce a very linear high current output. You know, if you look at the, the graph of the, of the alternator's output, it curves up like that. As the alternator's RPM increases, the output increases. You know, it kind of makes sense. But when you, when you purchase an alternator from a, one of these companies, especially some of these larger ones, they'll have a printout like this that they can give you, and it shows, they'll put it on a, on a bench machine, and they'll actually print out, and you can look here, the the curve of it and it shows the RPM and the alternator switches on, it ramps up and then you can see how it's almost a linear flat curve going across. That's wonderful, that's what I really like about it. So this particular one was rated 240 amps. On their graph it shows me that it actually spun up to 259 on the, on the high end, but it started to give or take around 200 where it kicked on and then it kind of lineared mostly in that 230, 240 range. So pretty decent. Now, you'll also see that the pulley is smaller on this, and there's a reason for that. So on these uh, Denso units, you'll find that they produce no output at low RPM, if the alternator is barely spinning, and then it'll suddenly switch on, ramp up, and then create your voltage. So you, they generally put a smaller pulley on to get the RPM on it, so that even at idle, you have it turned on and making full power. And they give you the pulley ratios, and actually this graph goes by alternator RPM, not engine RPM, which is really nice because you can play around with the pulley combos to see where you want to be. Okay, now that you know what alternator you're getting, make sure you're aware of the pulleys. If you're switching pulleys and you get a Denso type unit, you want to make sure you get the matching pulley. I have a couple examples here. These are actually eight rib ones that I had custom made. You can see how the backing here is totally different where it meets down at the alternator. That's because the Denso style units are different. Most aftermarket Denso units I've found come with a pulley, so you usually don't have to worry about it, but just be aware. Let's talk wiring. Okay, so if you're stepping up your alternator to just a stock 2001 through 2004 V6 alternator, you're gonna step up from 75 to 105 amps. It's, you know, it's something, it's pretty marginal though, but if you're just barely not getting by, that'll work. In that case, we way exceeded the alternator's ability. 
Uh, in fact, while we were doing some testing, I mean, we could see the voltage pulling way down and we knew it was a problem. We wanted to just keep testing the fans and configuring in the meantime, and we actually started melting wires off of the alternator and it had some smoke going on there <laughs> that burned things up. So we shut it down and got the alternator ordered sooner than later. So here's the data log on the old alternator. You can see the AC is on, everything's warmed up, the fans are running on full power, and look at how bad that voltage is. It's just struggling. It's no wonder it burnt up that alternator. Now in our case, we went with a 240 amp, and when you're stepping up the current like that, actually even if you're just stepping up to a stock alternator, you're gonna have to upgrade the wiring. This is the alternator wiring on a stock Fox. I'm not even kidding, I literally cut this out of the car. It, it's unbelievable, it's almost like a step up from speaker wire. <laughs> You're gonna have to get yourself some proper four gauge heavy cable and run that. Now the new alternators, if you look down here, they typically have a big stud coming out of them. You get some ring terminals, you can slide that on there and crimp on your, your cable and off you go. Not like the stock one where they just had these cheesy wires just coming out of there. In this case, you couldn't even unplug them. I had to cut them off the alternator. So definitely gonna have to step up that wiring. Now it's not a bad deal. It runs from the alternator around the top of the radiator, you know, in the core, you just unbolt the radiator, tilt it forward, slide it in there, and it comes around and sticks onto the starter solenoid on the firewall. It's kind of a main post point there on the Fox bodies where everyone grabs power from. That's where it goes. You should also have good grounds. Uh, I don't have any grinding cable here. We've already done it in the car in the past, it's, but you should have a heavy four gauge cable from your negative terminal to the engine, from the engine to the chassis. Uh, make sure you've got good grounds everywhere, especially when stepping up an alternator like this. Now the other wiring to consider is actually pretty easy. On the stock alternator, you have six wires coming out. You've got three out of this plug, uh, three out of this plug. Two, these were actually the so-called heavy current. <laughs> and then you had three smaller wires. One of them was the white stator wire that actually just looped between here and here, which leaves you with just two remaining wires, and that is a yellow and a green wire. And if you look at our replacement alternator, it comes with just a yellow and a green wire. Now they provided this little pigtail here, and this was to plug it directly into a V6 Mustang, because that's what we ordered it for. So we're just gonna snip that end off there, and we'll solder it directly into our, our wiring on the car. And of course, this plug here pulls out, so that won't be an issue unplugging it from the alternator when you go to service it. And from memory, let's see, yellow is key on ignition wire. It's called the sense wire, I believe, to energize the coils to start creating current. And the green wire is the one that goes to the dash that causes the bulb to illuminate when uh, it's not charging. All right, so there you have it, guys. Find yourself an 01 through 04 base model V6 Mustang alternator. Best bet. It's gonna have the correct pulley on there. It's gonna have the correct clocked output on the electrical on the back. And even if it doesn't, like I said, it's either three or four volts, depending on the exact alternator, loosen them, spin it around, put them back in, good to go. Get your four gauge cable, run a nice positive cable to upgrade that run, add your grounds, don't forget your grounds. And then just join your green and yellow wires, splice those together, discard the white stator wire, and you're good to go. So let's go throw this in the car and test it out. And we got a great test because we threw on those dual contour fans they put a heck of a load and then we of course we added AC so you're sitting there at idle with the blower motor cranked on full the fans going full power and you know every other little thing adds up we have bigger fuel pumps in that car you know we've got added electronics inside we got bigger headlight bulbs uh, all kinds of stuff has been added in there just about everything's upgraded so we're definitely gonna test it out let's go do it okay we're about to cut this off to wire it in the car and Reese actually notices it hold on this looks just like the alternator connector so I grabbed another 6G casing here and looked at it, and sure enough, it is exactly that connector right there, which is really cool, because then you can just get a plug like this that plugs into the alternator. You know, we had several of these laying around that normally would just plug right onto the alternator. It'll plug right onto this connector, no problem. So even easier than, you know, cutting this off and soldering it into the car, we're just going to take this guy and we'll cut the white wire out, of course, state of wire not used, and wire, solder this into the car, and we'll just have a nice little plug into our alternator right here. All right, when working with heavy four gauge cable like this, you need some decent tools, like these huge snips to cut it through it decently. And I know these uh, crimpers look ridiculous, <laughs> they're so huge, but you need stuff like this to get a good crimp and make some solid, professional good cables like this that are not gonna let you down. Okay, here you can see our alternator is tucked up and fits in here really well, even with a Vortex supercharger kit. And of course ours is custom modified where the alternator is moved up and tucked way in. If you watch our supercharger series you can see why and how we did that but what's really nice with the 6g casing is it still fits in there just like the stock little alternator did which is great 
we have a four gauge wire ran up and it goes behind this radiator which we still have it tilted forward and you know, we haven't pulled it back yet just running the cables along there runs behind the radiator comes up comes down right here this is the battery tray is going to go over here and it goes up uh, through the rat's nest which probably needs to be cleaned <laughs> to the uh, the battery terminal here uh, well the positive post where the battery terminal connects to your battery terminal connects to that post on the starter solenoid and that's where the alternator four gauge wire goes as well you also want to make sure you have really good grounds i pulled the one off the motor here you can see this one goes from the engine to the chassis four gauge heavy um, ground and we also have the same kind of thing from the motor to the battery terminal and so forth make sure your grounds are good so i think we're going to keep putting this together we're doing pretty good we got our wiring together of course uh, we hooked up the yellow and green to that pigtail got that spliced and joined and plugged in so we're in pretty good shape here Now bear in mind, right as the AC turned on, both contour fans went to full power. And so did the blower motor inside the car. There's a massive drain right now. Look how it holds the voltage. Real impressive. All right, car's been out driving for a while. It's fully heat soaked. Let's see how the alternator does now because usually that makes a little difference. Alternator, but not just this. Shut it off, shut it off, shut it off.